October 1st, 2015, Thursday. The same time. Shibuya Police Station. いい加減答えてくれないかな名前と住所は学生さんそれとも働いているのかなあの書きたっていう男の人と何回もあのホテル行ってるよねどういう知り合い付き合ってたのもし喋るのが嫌なら the officers, uh, the officer sank back into her chair in resignation. Shinjo could sympathize. He just to come check on her a moment ago, but they've probably been doing this since yesterday. Locked in an interrogation room, cut off from the outside world, and questioned by multiple officers, most people would lose their cool. They start to wonder what effects their words were having and focus on every movement of the officer who was taking down notes. It wasn't hot in the room, but they'd sweat. This girl didn't respond at all. She's a cool dad. Probably because, uh, probably wasn't because she was used to it. If she had ever been interrogated before, the fingerprints they'd taken would have told them who she was. あの、To a mental hospital, you mean? It made sense. The natural assumption was that the shock of the incident had in incapacitated her. Shinjo nodded as if considering it. This was the second day since the incident. If she lived in a normal family environment, Someone should have submitted a missing persons report by now. Well, she has no family. She seems like an orphan, so maybe again she's she's also another person connected to the orphanage that uh no no, you know, is in. But then again, well, but then Takaru would notice, right? Unless maybe he didn't see her. Or maybe she has a like I don't know, maybe she had a different hairstyle, that's why he doesn't recognize her or something. I don't know. Well, Shinjo watched the girl as he listened to her talk. But the girl didn't move a muscle. In the normal ways weren't going to work then. She'd be sent to the hospital by dawn at this rate. Uh, the other officer couldn't hide her happiness as she left the room. Shinjo sat down in the chair she'd been sitting in and took a good look at the girl from the front. She was ignoring him and still looking down at the desk. She didn't even seem to notice or care that the person in front of her had changed. Shinjo remembered his conversation with Momose. After he'd hung up, she called back in precisely three minutes, just like she promised. And then she said, My kid has a message for you. I'm, 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 I'm assuming, you know, uh, ace detective, you know, young ace detective, prodigy, who apparently is just super smart. それで今の新庄ちゃんのような反応をしたり変わらず黙ったままだったりしたら残念だけど悲観地しか取る手段はないそうよもし別の反応をしたらもう一度連絡をちょうだいうん。The message didn't make much sense, but he didn't see it any other way. 一つ聞きたいことがあるんだ。There's no response, of course. He continued uncertain if she was even hearing him. Okay, it's a leading question. Her eyes moved. 
Instead of looking down at the desk, she was looking at Shinjo. Shinjo was surprised, but did his best to hide it. I feel like, well, I feel, I feel like Shinjo doesn't know what he's talking about, but this is what you call a code reading, you know? Fortune tellers do this, where they assume something and... Like, they say something that would ambiguously mean something, and the other person assumes they know what you what you mean, but they actually don't. don't <laughs> Called a bluff. The girl stared at him as if trying to figure him out. And then a moment later... Her words were quiet but sharp. It was the same tone of voice that Shinjo used when he was interrogating a subject. She seemed to be thinking about something as she stared at him. Her mannerisms were just like his own, again. It was the same way a detective faced a criminal, trying to gain every scrap of information for what he could see. And then she slowly opened her mouth. Okay, she, she's a student. Hekihyo Academy. Well, you know, apparently she... But then again, well... I don't know, but then... So I'm thinking like then um, Takuru would notice if she was a student, but then again, yeah, I guess he's not really used to seeing new people, and that's why he doesn't recognize her as well. Hmm. That's her name though, Arimura Hinai. I left the motorhome where I lived alone, and only then I did realize, or uh, only then did I realize that it was evening. And also, you know, when I think about it, well, it is a pretty big school. You probably don't know everyone, you know, I imagine. Even if she was from the same school, it's hard to notice, I guess. The sunlight must have been pouring into my room, but I hadn't noticed. I didn't really remember when I gone to sleep or when I woken up. I was thinking like Serika as well. Maybe Serika didn't know her as well, you know? I looked around and made sure that none of the scenery had changed and I walked up the steps in front of me. Miyashita Park was just a few minutes walk away from Shibuya Station. It was known as Homeless Park, or is also known as Homeless Park. This was where I lived after I left the dorm. The first floor has uh, was a huge parking structure, and the second story had a uh, futsu field and a climbing wall. It had been mostly abandoned during the recovery efforts after the Shibuya earthquake. After the quake, people who lost their family, who, who, or who had never had any family to begin with, gathered here en masse. Mitake Park, which was right next door, was supposed to be the evacuation point for this area, but Miyashita had always been a mecca for the homeless, so everyone gathered here. When people gathered, so did things. Containers filled with food, blankets, and tents, and even trailer, or even the trailer for a motorhome that was left behind where its owner fled Shibuya. Every part of the park was overhauled to create a place for people to live. The parking lot, the futsu field, the climbing wall, etc. And the next thing anyone knew, there was a society there that was big enough that the government couldn't force them out. And some group of idiots came out to try and turn the place into a temporary housing. That was shot down in less than a month. As a, as a result, even though you could find beautifully rebuilt skyscrapers just a street away, Nishida Park became one of the Japan's biggest slums. I spoke to the man who sold newspapers, magazines, and everything else as I picked up a newspaper today's date, October the 4th on it. October the 1st, rather. He showed me the snacks and the alcohol at his feet. He must have sold a lot today. There are a lot of people in the park who had enough money that they could have stayed in a capsule hotel if they wanted to. I thanked him and went to leave. He handed me a 1,000 yen bill. I nodded, took it, and headed deep into the park with my paper. Oh, he's very trusting, I don't know. And so, uh, oh, and so his name was Maddie? 
Matchan. Miyashita Park was divided into north and south halves by a road. If he said he was from the south, that must mean there was a Maddie on the north side who I hadn't met yet. Well, what, what do you mean by that? Another one? I don't know. The administrative. Uh, the administrative. I can't say the word. Administrative. 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 administrative the office on the south side. Just like the name implied, it was all the administration was done for the Miyashita Park. Kept things peaceful between the government and the park occupants, resolved disputes between the homeless, and maintained all the facilities in the park. I knew the woman there by her face, but not her name. I gave her the electric bill, which was due on the first of the month, along with Maddie's part. Life in the park must seem uh, carefree and lawless from the outside, but it was actually much stricter than you find in some families. Everyone who lived in the outer rim of the park, including me, since I live in the far, uh, far south, have been asked by the management to keep an eye out for that. When I looked earlier, I hadn't seen anything change from my around my place. All too well. I was startled but quickly nodded. I suddenly felt like they were criticizing me for hiding something. The corridor that connected the north and south ends of the park. This place, looking down at Meiji Street, was the one part that hadn't really changed since before the earthquake. There were cracks here and there, but the government had forbidden people to put things here because it would ruin the view and might not be safe. I leaned up against the rail and spread open the newspaper with the setting sun shining down on me. Stop, stop honking your horn. <laughs> there was a column on the front page about the Love Hotel incident, but no new information. There was nothing in the article about the girl who was found at the scene or how this could be related to what happened six years ago. Did they not figured that out yet? Or maybe they had, and they weren't just announcing it. If it had something to do with the incident six years ago, then so did Don't Look At Me and Leaky Noise. Did that mean they weren't suicides? If the killer had driven them to suicide, it was probably the same person behind three incidents. But was he working alone or part of a group? Or maybe people who were related somehow to the incident six years ago were killing themselves one after the other? One, one after another? Maybe I should look at what the three cases had in common again. Ah yes, Hinai. And her bloody eyes. So it's not really- oh no no, I see, it's kind of bloody. It's kind of mixed in with tears though, so it's not- kind of like a pinkish, kind of like liquid, you know? I guess it makes sense. Damn it, what the hell? My head went up to the new bandage on my cheek. I rubbed it several times to make sure that it was still there. I took out my smartphone. The data I recorded at the scene had been deleted by the police. I probably should have just counted myself lucky that they didn't take the phone itself. And also, yeah, I mean, again, he's like living in like a homeless-ish area, you know? And everything. I imagine not everyone here is like super poor, but it's interesting that he's like living in an RV and everything, and he has enough to pay for the electric bill, right? So it's kind of like, where, where, is, where does he get his money? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe inheritance from his family? I don't know. Or just government funding. Because, uh, you know, the earthquake and everything. Well, I lost my biggest clue to the case. Maybe this was just out of my league. Maybe it was stupid to get involved. Oh, what's this? Interesting. I mean, there's, uh, there's Nono Kurusu. There's Miyashiro, uh... Takuru. I always forget his name. It's right here. Miyashiro Takuru. Takuru. Taku. Taku. Taku Bell. No, uh, Takuru. I don't know who these two are. They look generic because they have, you know, very, like, non-anime hair. Spot the spot the main characters. The one's blonde, the one the blue hair. I don't know who this guy is, I guess. He might be important. I don't know. There's a lab coat. 
And then I got a call on my phone. I checked the name and hit the answer button. Hi. Yes. Yes. Nani? Okay. Isn't it the, the character from uh, Blood Tune, I guess? That really just reminds me of Renge from Nanan Biori. I mean, even the mouth is, is the same. It's that V mouth. As always, the waitress's appearance and manners were a mystery to me. I bowed to her and went to my seat. Serika was there already, reading a manga. What a nerd. She was filling with her Gero Froggy cell phone strap without realizing it, as usual. It was, really was a strange habit, and a nuisance to the people around her. Cafe Lax, the preferred hangout of the newspaper club, was just a 10 minute walk from Shibuya Station. The owner was a manga fan, and the walls were lined with the stuff. Oh, well, that's pretty nice. Oh, what are these hands? Uh, I can't, can't really read that. I don't know what it says. There was a uh, free Wi-Fi, the prices were good, and if it wasn't crowded, you could sit there for hours as long as you brought a single drink. Or bought. The most important part was that since it was uh, in a hard-to-find spot, barely anyone from Hickey Hill knew about it. So I didn't have to worry about running to anyone I knew. As usual, there was barely anyone there. Just a single couple that appeared to be in college. I ordered my usual mountain view, <laughs> mountain dew, mountain view, and sat down. Serika went and put the manga back on the shelf and came and sat back down. Okay, she just wasn't reading it. Just holding it in her hands. I took the bag containing my uniform from Serika. It was a uniform that had gotten covered with blood at the Love Hotel. I nodded. I hadn't felt like it at all. When I got up this morning, I sent both of them a text saying that I was okay. They both sent back responses almost immediately, but neither, neither of them said about much about what happened. They probably weren't mentioning it for my sake. Oh, I mean, yeah, again. No interesting thing to say. It wasn't, it wasn't my first rodeo. I've seen dead bodies before. Serika spoke in a normal tone of voice as she drank her favorite grapefruit juice. I, she didn't seem like she was lying. Though I do remember her, like, wasn't it described that she was, like, puking, you know, at the time? So, I guess she got that out of her system already. Like when she would, you know, when, when we discovered the crime scene and everything. That's how she's been since she was a kid. It wasn't that she didn't have any feelings, she just got over them very quickly. <sighs> now that she asked, I wasn't sure how to answer the question. Hello, Renge. The waitress brought me my mountain view. I nodded and took it. Was I okay? I spun the ice in my drink as I listened to the couple's irritating conversation. Sarika silently waited for my answer. I knew that face. She'd been my friend since we were kids. There's no point in trying to hide it. Oh? 
事件を追うかどうか。Sarika seemed genuinely shocked. Eh? Huntuni? Suimasa! Grape fruit, more t o More? Sarika raised her hand and ordered another drink. It's more a taku that a chance da to call mote, spasite n i That might be true, but things were different this time. After what I, I'd gone through. そりゃホテルは怖かったけどさ。サラカ continued as if she knew exactly what I was thinking。昔、都市伝説とか追っかけてた時もそうだったじゃん。ほら、冒険だって言って、病院に忍び込んだの覚えてる ?I nodded. I just dreamed about it. あの時も怖かったけど。この怖さは他の人が経験してないもんなんだ。貴重なんだって。泣きながらさ。Because I'm thinking about that, that like scene, you know, where it was like someone being tortured in a chair, you know, like, like an electric chair. Was that part of the Avenger? I don't know. I don't know. Sarika took her glass of juice and gulped it down. Well, interesting that Serika is like, you know, like、uh, encouraging this reckless behavior of chasing down, you know, these weird murders or suicides. Who knows? I don't know. And、uh, Kurusu is like the opposite, you know? It's like, don't do that. I don't know. Her voice was light as she drank her juice, but her words didn't feel light at all. Something other people had experienced. Something different from other people. She just, she's just pretending. She's pretending to be dumb, but actually, she's the main villain. Oh no.、Uh, I stared at Serika's face. How much did she understand about what she, what she was saying? She moved the juice away from me. No juice for you. <laughs> I was wrong. She probably didn't realize anything. Actually, she wasn't even thinking about anything. She really was dumb. <laughs> That's like. Stop talking bad about your friend in your head. I was pretty sure I told her a bunch of times. Well, whatever. Time for a lecture. I was pretty sure I told her a bunch of times. Imperial's child syndrome again popping up. Of course, I've been in a coma for about a year after the earthquake, so I only investigated it after I woke up. うん。
そんな中で一人の被災者が言ったんだよ。I remember what they said word for word. It had left a huge impression on me. 頑張れという部外者。正直うなずいたよ。心底。They just said exactly what I was thinking. They, I didn't know who they were, but I admired them anyway. Those feelings were the exact opposite of all the excited, fired up people on the outside. これを言った人は僕に近い人だっていう気がするんだ。ただ一連の出来事をネットで見ていた他人とは違う。そして、ただ被災しただけの人とも違う。両親のこと<笑>あそういえば復興祭合わせの飲みテニサーの連中も来るって I'm, I'm actually getting confused but then I don't know the earthquake when the earthquake happened didn't his parents die? and yet there was a comment、oh, let me just double check the log it's like what did he mention in the first one? it was like uh After the earthquake, yeah, it was after the earthquake, they're asking for comments, right? And everything. And I, ironically, all that city, they, they, they all said, like, you know, they were just thinking about other people, which is funny. Asking the victims for comments. Yeah, it was the victims. Which is funny because we saw that flashback and it wasn't, you know, looking good, actually. There was a bunch of looting and violence, actually, but. But then Serica. Implies that the person who made the comment about how, like,、uh, you know, you outsiders have some nerve if you're telling us to hang in there. I think the, the word they use is uh, uh, gambare, you know, gambare. It's like a very Japanese word, actually. Gambare, gambare mas, you know, just basically like do your best is the idea. You know, no matter what, if the situation is bad, try to just keep going, I guess, usually that's what it means.、Um, but then she implies that. His parents said that, but his parents are dead? I don't know. I'm a little bit confused about that. Anyway. I was different. I was different than the people who just live normal lives in Shibuya. I ripped the bandage off my cheek. The wound had closed up. Okay, I was expecting, you know, blood to just squirt out and then we die. No, okay. My face was back to normal. I was back to normal. The case was right in front of me. I had a huge mystery to investigate. I wasn't about to just be caught up in something. As a right sider, it was my job to jump right into the middle of all this information, right? I could feel something like excitement mixed with a sense of duty welling up inside me. The call of duty, you might say. I couldn't stop myself from smiling. I nodded. Sarika laughed a little strangely. And then, for some reason, she patted me lightly on the shoulder. I didn't know what that meant, but I started to laugh too. Serica nodded. Now let's casually just go in the love hotel together. As Serica took out her Pokecom, she typed into it with a practice hand. She seemed to be loading a video file. You had time to do that? I guess maybe after they collapsed and everything? He sneakily, you know, uploaded it. By the time I got home, the sun had long since set. It was past 8 o'clock p.m. Interesting, the police deleted the video. Well, okay. I guess it's because they said they were in like the newspaper club. Because I was thinking they would like just, you know, keep the evidence, not delete it. But maybe, maybe they also just like copied, you know, the video for themselves and then deleted it, maybe. Anyway, I realized that I had barely eaten anything since I arrived at the Love Hotel and suddenly felt very hungry. So I'd eaten a meal at Lax. So, yeah, but when I got to the 
気になってたんだけど電気ポット変わった前はもっとあここ物置にしたんだ Sarika followed me home. She started to glance around the room and offer her opinions on the way out it was, on the way it was laid out. She would open drawers and be surprised even though there was nothing important inside, or look at new files about the cases and tell me their contents at a glance. She was always a little strange like that. She would be surprised by the most obvious things, but sometimes she would show startling insight. And wait. <laughs> she laughed another strange laugh. Okay, she's just, you know, I guess a nihilist. You're all gonna die someday anyway. <laughs> I see, I thought. He was right. A sound came from my PC. The copy operation was finished. Oh, なんで物が物だからな。他の人間に見られたら困る。このストレージ、私が個人的に使ってるやつだから大丈夫だよ。それでもだ。誰でもアクセスできる可能性は少しでも潰しておきたい。そうだな。お前のポケコンのやつも念
I prepared two cups like it was the most natural thing in the world and poured out the kakonto I made. Then, being very careful not to let Serika see me, I took the eye drops off the shelf. Now, to just add a few drops off, that, off it to this and maybe be enough to arouse even Serika. Why are we doing this? I tried adding a few drops. Wait a second. Cool Cat Press haven't said anything about how, how much how to use. So I had no idea how much it would take to get any effect. Stop spiking her drink, even though I guess this is just a, it's just a delusion, it's not real. It felt like you would need more than a few drops. Okay, then I'll just have to add the whole bottle. <laughs> well, I don't know. The problem was just how, how to make sure the Serica didn't see me. Serica did just what I told her. Heh heh, so easy. I guess it's just, you know, his evil delusions. While she sat on the sofa, I went around to where she couldn't see me and opened the lid on the eye drops, and then poured a whole bottle in. My heart felt like it was pounding fast. I tried to act normal as I handed her the cup. Oh shit. Terika laughed. It was lucky for me that she was so stupid. I don't like why he just I don't like evil Hakuru. She put the cup up to her lips with no hesitation. And then Okay, I'm, 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 I think I know what's going to happen. She started coughing. <coughs> yeah, I should have seen that coming. I must have added the wrong amount. I'd have to tell her what I'd done later and apologize. <coughs> Serika wouldn't stop coughing. Her body was twisting in pain. The cup fell to the floor and spilled the kokonto everywhere. <laughs> this wasn't normal. <laughs> and then all too suddenly she coughed up blood. Ah oh, yes. The red liquid stained the sofa, the floor, and me. Was I not supposed to mix Kakanto and eye drops? Did I accidentally mix something poisonous? You fool. I tried to pat her back when she, her eyes suddenly rolled up into her head. She started to spasm and shake. All I could do was sh watch in shock. Soon she laid down the bed, face up, then stopped moving. Blood was still dripping from the side of her mouth. She wasn't breathing. <laughs> okay. It's really, it really is like, um, I don't know, it's really like, you know, either you choose fan service as a positive delusion, or you like, uh, get a creepy pasta, I guess, as a negative delusion. Like, short stories. Short, like, horror stories. In a way, it's kind of like bad ends, actually. I don't think about it. Kind of cool. I like you know, I like it when visual novels have bad ends. I don't know. It's like Fate Stay Night. Get a bunch of bad ends. It would be like a bad end. It would be a funny bad end, but you know. Serka was looking at me, head tilted in surprise. There's no blood or drool dripping from my mouth, and her eyes were rolled to the back of her head. Serika just did what I told her. I couldn't tell if she was obedient or just didn't care. But for now, I was saved. I took a drip from the cup of Kokonto in my hands. It didn't taste like medicine. I hadn't been able to find any eye drops in the shell, so I just given it to her normally. It was wrong to think about experimenting on a friend. Yeah. Should not do that. Don't do that. Don't spike your friend's drink. 
especially with poison. Moral of the story. Was that why? Well, he did help me out a lot. Sarika put away her Pokecom. Alright. I booted up the laptop next to the wall and sat down the chair that folded out into a bed. Though I do wonder, well, I don't know how it works necessarily, but like, apparently she deleted uh, uh, the file on her Pokecom and deleted it on online storage, but there are ways to get data, you know, even after it's been deleted, you know. But, oh well. As I went to load the video file into the player software, I happened to glance at its length. Though I guess it would take longer. If it wasn't like readily apparent that the file was on the system before, it would be hard if it's like an outsider trying to like, you know, trying to get in the information. Oh, Serika said. で、私も気持ち悪くて入っちゃってたんだけど、いつの間にかタクが落としたスマホを自分のポケットに入れてて。それで警察に連れてかれるパトカーの中でスマホのことに気づいて、そこで私がログボタンを止めたから。So that was it. Come to think of it, I had an ass how it happened. Sarika nodded as if she felt the same way. Hmm. I wonder about this. It also reminds me of the time where she found the back door to the Love Hotel, you know, saying that, oh, I was just getting a drink, and oh, whoops, well, I found the back entrance. Isn't that amazing? You know? It's kind of like, again, she really is, I feel like, pretending. <laughs> I really was. I passed out in the hotel and next thing I knew I was at the station. Supposedly I walked from the patrol car to my room but my memory was vague and hazy. I took a big sip from the cup to choke down the urge to vomit and slowly let it sink into my stomach. If the recording was successful then I should see what I seen then. That happened two days ago but had left such a strong impression on me that it didn't feel like that much time had passed at all. I took a deep breath and told myself it was time to do this. I looked over at Serika. She nodded back at me and glared at the monitor. Okay. I tried to steady my slightly shaking finger as I clicked the file. Also, again, notice the wallpaper was a different, right? So I believe the wallpaper for um, Takaru and the wallpaper sometimes we, we, we scroll down, you know, interact with the computer screen is different, so it's from a different perspective. So I wonder who that one was. Anyway, the first thing I noticed was that sound. The peaceful sound of the music box that filled the room for that spinning bed. A dark, gloomy room, a curtain in the back, and a rotating bed behind it. It was that room. The same emotions I'd experienced before came flooding back to me through the blurry screen. I could sense my own hesitation from my gasping breaths. <laughs> Serika grabbed my shoulder at the sudden sound. The camera was slowly moving toward the back of the room. At some point, my breathing matched the breathing in the recording. It scared me, so I pulled away a little and took a deep breath to isolate myself from the person in the video. I heard that sound. The sound of the wire creaking as the bed spun. I could feel the panic coming through the screen. I wasn't sure what to do. I could tell that Sarika was gulping a little. As I spoke, the camera kept going forward. 
I could hear Serka's soft gasp in the video. The police officer and the woman were lying on the floor. I hadn't realized at the time, but the glass was scattered all around. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. The camera quickly panned without warning. I know what panning is, okay? You don't have to explain what panning is. And moved, basically. It was that bed. The silhouette behind the curtain was probably that man. The angle was off and I wasn't pointing directly at the bed. At that point, I hadn't really been aware of the smartphone. Hmm. Though it is interesting we're getting an uh, objective, you know, recording of what was happening. So, I wonder if we did have any delusions, you know, like, like, uh, like hidden delusions, I guess. That wasn't part of, like, the mechanic, you know. But I heard a dull thud and the screen went black. It felt like I tripped and fallen backward. The phone had probably fallen from my hands. Was it black because the camera had fallen face down? Psycho's voice sounded like it was a little far away. It was still picking up sound, evidently. I could hear myself trying to open the door and swearing when I failed. That's right, I've been fighting with the door then. And then... There is that knock, so that wasn't an auditory hallucination, it seems. So I was I was wondering if that knocking was, you know, fake, you know, it was as if we were like hallucinating. But I guess we do hear it in the phone recording, and so it has to be real. And my body shivered as if it had gone numb. This was. I could hear it. <sighs> I could hear it. The police said the surveillance cameras hadn't shown anyone else coming into the room, but I could hear it. That constant ryth rhythmic knocking. Somehow, somehow it made me feel uneasy and scared. Someone had been under the side of that door. Well, that's, that is an assumption. Though I do wonder. I mean, assuming there isn't any invisibility magic going on or someone wearing, you know, stealth camo. Um, maybe that knocking sound isn't a person doing it. It's something else that sounds like knocking and that's what we've been assuming this whole time. But I'm not sure. We'll see, I guess. And suddenly the screen moved. It was showing the man on the bed. The screen was blurry, but the man was almost exactly in the center of the viewfinder. And I picked up the smartphone? I couldn't remember. In the video, I ignored Serika's voice and kept pointing at the, the camera at the man. I think his head is on backwards, it seems like. I could hear my own rough breathing and I remember how I felt then. And then suddenly, I heard a snap. Hey, hello. Hello, Hinai, I guess, is your name? <laughs> That's quite a reaction. Bloop, and then it drops on the floor. The screen moved violently for a second, and then for a moment it showed the girl. Then the angle changed again and it stopped moving. The screen was covered in red blood, but... What I was looking at was probably the room ceiling. Since it didn't move at all, that was probably where I passed out and dropped it. Just like before, the camera was still recording the sound, and I could hear Serika vomiting, and what sounded like someone falling over. It caught the police officers running into the room, they were asking Serika what was going on. She was probably the only one who was still conscious. Okay, so she didn't pass out. I thought she passed out as well, but... No, actually, the police officers came right after. Well, shortly after, the screen went black. Serika had probably put the phone into her pocket, just like she said. I could hear an irritating noise that must have been the sound of the phone scraping the skirt's fabric. 
The screen stayed black, but it kept picking up the nearby sound. And then at the very end, there was a quick shot of the inside of a patrol car. I guess that's it. I was hoping for something, some more, actually. I was hoping for some more, like, clues that was different from what we saw. But it was pretty much the same. I guess we know a little bit more of how, how, what happened, you know, after uh, Takaru fell and fell unconscious. But other than that, it doesn't seem all that, you know, revealing of anything, really. But I realized that at some point I leaned my body toward the screen. I sat back in my chair. I had known what was going to happen, but this was still hard. To be honest, I was lucky that the phone was dropped and a lot of it wasn't clearly recorded. I didn't feel as much of an urge to vomit as I expected, but I was still sweating from a nasty, unpleasant feeling. I gulped down the last bit of liquid in my cup. I asked Serika. And then... Did we? Well, I didn't really show. It just showed like a it showed like a like white screen and it went black again? I don't know. No, no. I didn't see anything. Weird? The whole thing was weird. Not a second of it was normal. Sarika moved the mouse to jump backward into the video. I couldn't tell whether she was tough or simply dense, or maybe just felt like it was nothing but a video, but she advanced through the shocking scenes with no hesitation. It was just fast word. Outside the window? I mean, looks the same to me. You know, we did see that curtain flapping about before, unless... There's not, is that something there? It's hard to tell. Not like a... A sticker? That we saw before? Uh -huh. oh. I could see the wall of the Love Hotel across the street from the open window. There was something there. Zoom in. Enhance. <laughs> she hated bugs. Why was her first answer a bug and her second answer the sensible one? Yeah, it's on the, you know, the main menu actually. Can, can we see it? Uh, we don't see it here, but it's on the, like, you know, the start menu. When you open the game. Bunch of those, like, weird heads. I switched from the player software to my editing software, then blew up that part of the screen. Damn it, I could make it out, but it was so far away that it was blurry. I mean, obviously, you know, you can't can't do it like in the in the shows. When you zoom in, the resolution doesn't, doesn't increase or anything. That's not how it works. The resolution was too low. It's wings? <laughs> what? I turn around the loud, 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 loud. I turn around the loud noise. Oh, someone come in? Oh. Are you drunk? There was a drunk man with a bottle of booze in his hand. Give me a break. Of course, no one was waiting. もっと静かに入ってきてよ。ああ、元さん、この前はありがとうね。この前ラブホテルの事件のこと教えてくれたじゃん。おお、ああ、そうだったか。まあ、どうでもいい。事件か良かったな。タコは新聞記者になりたい
He was the elder ruler of the park and the CEO of a company with 3 billion yen a year salary and the best friend of my father, Jiro. At least according to him. My dad's name wasn't even Jiro. Okay, so he was just lying. He was related to a clan of foreign nobles, and so if he ever needed to do a he or if he is, and so if he ever needed to, he could summon a foreign special forces team to do his bidding. Yes. Except last week, his bed had been taken over by a stray dog, and he had to come stay with me. Gen was always loud when he got drunk, and when he got really drunk, he was louder. Today, he wasn't very drunk. <laughs> okay. I had no idea what he was like when he was sober. I'd never seen it happen, or heard of it happening. Sometimes, or often actually, at least once a week, he would come by my room drunk, talk for a while, and then leave to search the park for more alcohol. Okay. It was obnoxious as hell, to put it mildly, but I couldn't chase him away. Actually, I couldn't complain about him much at all. When I left the dorm half a year ago, I ended up at the bottom half of Miyashita Park. Since the upper half kept the rain off, the bottom half was one of the most popular spots. A lot of the reason I was able to get this spot and even get this motorhome was because of Gen. When I lived in the dorm, I'd done some cooking for the homeless in the Miyashita Park as part of our volunteer activities. Gen had remembered that. A nobleman does not forget his debts, was all he said, and somehow I'd be given this place. I mean, well, I mean that's pretty great. How do you get this? His RV is still pretty expensive, though. I don't know. He was also the one who taught me how to get by in this place. He also has a bunch of stuff as well. Gen took something out of his pocket. More stuff? I ripped the copy of my favorite magazine out of his hands. I quickly glanced over to Serica. She was mumbling that over and over to herself. I thought she liked him. <laughs> Good, she didn't see it. I breathed a sigh of relief and hid it someplace nearby. Gen raised a single finger. This was one rule, for example. It was the first thing, uh, first thing I've learned in the park. The homeless would never ever ask you for money. It was the one thing they could never say. Money was either found lying on the ground or earned by working or selling things. It wasn't something other people gave you. I took out a hundred yen coin from my wallet and gave it to him. Gen grabbed it and put it in his pocket like he didn't really care. Oh, he's looking at the PC monitor as he spoke. For a moment, I didn't know what he meant. And also 100 yen? Did we only give 100 yen? What was it? Uh, 100 yen. That's not a lot. It's like very little. It's like a dollar. Uh, for, uh, for a moment, I didn't know what he meant. Huh? Oh? My eyes met Sericus for just a moment. My monitor was still displaying that blurry, blown-up image. He saw it a lot? <laughs> he was in his own little world. What was this guy's problem? I got closer to him. どこにでもあんだろうよ、これ。例えば駅前の駅前って誰だ。は駅前って駅前なんでしょ渋谷の駅前の。だからこれあの、うん、つうかタク。おめえ、前に見せてくれたやつにも映ってんだろ。
おめえがカラオケに張り込んでなんかを初めて抑えたとかつってよ That was the last weekend actually When I've been uploading the photos of the crime scene I've taken from the karaoke box Gen had combined and seen them <gasps> Click click This was it It was an image of the karaoke box I hid it in to take pictures of the crime scene. It was on the fifth floor. I could see the same mark. I switched from the player software to the editor software just like before and magnified that part of the image. Yeah. It's uh, over here. And then I realized what it was. That's right. I had seen this thing before, and just like Gen said, it was something you could find all over Shibuya. Something that had been there for a long time. This weird face thing. Sumo wrestler sticker. You know, for some reason, I, can't, I don't know. I don't know why I thought in my head it was a panda sticker. I think I mentioned saying it was like a panda sticker. It's not a panda sticker. It's a sumo wrestler sticker. Even though, does this look like a sumo wrestler? I don't, I don't know what it looks like a sumo wrestler. I guess he has a, you know. A big neck, <laughs> but uh, but also obviously has two heads as well. Oh, not two heads, but two faces rather. Two faces on one head. As I saw the club room for the first time in three days, I was stunned. 